Hi, I'm Chef Miko Aspiras. And I'm Chef Micheline Dapo. Today, we're super excited to share with you some innovative and fresh calamansi recipes that you can make at home, and it's actually perfect for summer. Calamansi is commonly used in the Philippines, and it's actually one of my favorite ingredients to use. Mine too. Yeah, because you can use it for both savory or sweet uh, pastries for your desserts. So calamansi is actually a tiny citrus that's packed with a lot of flavors and it's commonly used in the Philippines. Uh, today we're going to share with you some dessert recipes and a drink. Uh, the dessert would be a calamansi summer trifle. And it could be good complement with our summer drink which mm -hmm. is um, calamansi and blue pea iced tea. Yeah, I'm so excited to start. Let's get on with it. Come on, let's start. Okay. All right, for the calamansi summer trifle, we have three main components. So the first one is a salty cashew crumble, and then we have the calamansi curd, and then a salty meringue. We added a lot of salt here and there because we want the saltiness to counter the sourness and the sweetness of the entire dish. So the first component is uh, that we're making here today is the calamansi curd. So we have uh, four egg yolks. So we have 400 ml of condensed milk. Next, we have 4 grams of salt. And then here we have 40 grams of corn flour. We have 50 grams of uh, cold cube butter. And then of course, we have 120 ml of calamansi extract. Alright, so we start by whisking the egg yolks in a, in a large bowl like this. So we just need to loosen up the egg yolks mm -hmm. and break the the walls. So break the walls. We're not to so break the walls or the membrane of the, So I'm getting very scientific here, but we just need to um, stir that together yep. so that it's broken down. We don't need to whip anything. You just want it mixed smooth before you add any yes, that's ingredients. Right. That's good. All right. All right. And then let's grab a pot. Mm -hmm. A medium sized pot, heavy bottom, and then we're going to mix the condensed milk. Alright. Mm, actually, Miko, that's so yummy. I, I can put condensed milk on also. anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright, and then we're going to add the salt. Mm -hmm. Just stir that together. And then the corn flour. Just make sure you stir that all together. And then we're just going to put this on medium heat and allow it to simmer. All right, so we're just heating this up for around uh, five minutes or until uh, the condensed milk is warmed mm -hmm. all the way through. And then we're, we're going to pour a little bit of this onto our egg yolks to temper that. Now that the condensed milk is warm enough, we can start tempering the egg yolks. Okay. So what all we need to do is just to pour a quarter of the amount, total amount of condensed milk onto the egg yolks mm -hmm. and just stir that together. Alright. It doesn't need to be exact. So just uh, stir that together. Uh, uh, by doing that, you're, we're warming up the egg yolks. And it will shock your um, yolk mixture when you put it back into your pot of okay. condensed milk. Yeah. So again, we're not whisk, uh, we're not whipping anything. We don't. You we don't. don't you don't want aeration. Yeah. Uh, we just need to incorporate the two ingredients together. And now we're going to pour this back onto the simmering liquid. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most important part is we continue to stir that until the mixture is thickened. All right, mix. Looks done. Yep. So what we're looking for is a cold nape. It's actually a very fancy term for um, a texture that it coats the back of the spoon when you run your finger through the spoon. Mm -hmm. So that is an indication that your mixture is thick enough. And it's ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so next, of course, we need to add the calamansi extract. So just stir that together. This will thin out the mixture, but we have a thickener, which is the uh, cold cube butter. Mm -hmm. So we add that in as well. 
and just stir that together until the butter is incorporated. All right. I, I love the smell of calamansi and butter and the milk together. It's just so intoxicating. Uh, we have here um, a, a large bowl. So we need a large bowl and some ice um to cool this the to cool the mixture rapidly or you can always just chuck this in the uh, fridge? Ch ch the fridge and just allow that to cool down uh, slowly all right so we need to put the, the bowl in there mm -hmm. yeah i can smell it it's smelling yeah. yummy all right so we need to pour uh, we need to pour the mixture onto the bowl so you see there's a few more pieces of um, butter in there. We just continue we just need to continue to stir that and incorporate that into the mixture. That's fine. Right. Yum. I think this is a, a successful mixture because uh, it's very smooth and very creamy. And we don't see any um, traces of overcooked eggs. Yeah. No scrambled calamansi flavored um, curd. All right, so we just need to continue to cool this down and set this aside until we're ready to assemble. All right, now to the second component is your cashew crumble. We'll start off with 150 grams of plain flour, 50 grams of caster sugar. You have your 50 grams of chopped toasted cashew. 100 grams of butter, 2 grams of salt, and 30 ml of your milk. Fresh milk, yeah. Fresh milk. So how easy is this to make, Michelle? It's actually easy. You dump all in and then you make a dough. Yeah. Right? So, so in yes. a large bowl? In a large bowl, yeah. So you have room to move mm -hmm. around, all right? So you start with your flour and your sugar, salt, and your toasted chopped cashew nuts. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miko. Okay, no worries. Let's Incorporate just start to and mix, mix it. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you notice, I'm just using my the fingers, not this palm here. It's, it's a bit warm. Mm -hmm. Might melt my butter in the end. Okay. okay. So now we can add the chilled cube butter. Okay. So it's important that your butter is chilled and it's cut uniformly. Yes, because it the purpose of it chilled you know when you mix it together with your flour mixture you don't want it to melt because mm -hmm. you want to form a dough yeah right so you're just gonna rub it in using your fingertips so what the crumble does to our dish to our trifle it it adds texture and the nutty flavor nutty from flavor, the cashew yes i think the nutty flavor is important to balance the sourness and this the saltiness of all the uh, the other components so yeah you can also of course use a planetary mixer uh, using a paddle attachment for this one uh, when making a crumble but i think it's just more organic this way yeah. uh, and, and you can feel the dough and the yeah. butter you know if it's if it's ready yeah, mm -hmm. yeah just add all right it. so now we're going to add the milk so that's 30 ml of just fresh milk all right so this time around it's gonna be a little bit sticky okay yeah. and then we're going to form it into a bowl, bowl. Yeah. so the bowl the size of your palm and then we're just going to wrap that in cling film and then we're going to store that yeah in the freezer yeah. so it's it sets out um quickly all right. All right so i think this would make around three to four balls yeah. depending uh, on, on the size, the size of, of your hand if you're doing it that way it's gonna be six yeah. So, yeah all right making it smaller actually is uh, a good thing to do because, because you're it, gonna it freezes faster yeah a lot faster and my hands are small and i'm gonna grate it <laughs> <laughs> all right. so it's important to wrap it in cling film before we store this yes. so it keeps its shape mm -hmm. teamwork <laughs> i give you the balls you wrap the balls okay this is actually a very classic French way of making crumble. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's simple, but it's actually, it has a history. So it's all set, came from the freezer. 
Hmm? So it's very firm now. Yeah. Okay. So we have here a microplane. You can also use a box grater. Yeah. But what we're looking for is the medium size um, grids, like yeah. holes. And so what we next thing that we need to do is we have to grate it in a seal pad or a baking sheet or baking mm -hmm. paper. Okay. Uh, before you do that, make sure that your oven is preheated for 175 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's grate. Be careful. When you're grating, make sure that your dough is also not clumped up because you want them to cook evenly in the oven, mm -hmm. right? Because that will give you the texture that we're looking for. Yes. It's evenly crunchy. You can taste the nuttiness of the cashew and the flour mm -hmm. and the butter all together. Yes. So how long do we bake this for? Around five, five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. yeah. But you also have to make sure, you know, you keep on checking mm -hmm. with the heat inside your oven. This is a good arm workout. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're going to cook this in the oven for about five minutes. Again, for 175 degrees Celsius. Right. Miko, it's finished. Yay. Yeah. Looks so good. So I'm just going to have this cool down for a while mm -hmm. while you make our last component, yep. which is the salty meringue. All right, for the salty meringue, okay, we will be needing egg, egg whites from four large eggs, 90 grams caster sugar, four grams salt, and then a gram of cream of tartar. So all we need to do is just dump all of the ingredients in a large bowl. So Miko, we need to make sure that um, what if there's already yolks from what I've separated? How can we troubleshoot that? What do you mean? Like, um, uh, when I'm separating yeah, my eggs. Okay, so it's very important when whipping or make, uh, whipping egg whites or making a meringue that it has to be clean off uh, any egg yolks, any traces of egg yolks. You can easily remove uh, small traces of egg yolks by uh, taking it off using uh, a spoon or the shell of the egg. So yeah, but it's important that the egg whites is clean. It's, uh, it's just egg whites because it won't whip. It will not whip if you have even the smallest trace of egg yolks. In there so to whip that i'm using a hand mixer with a whisk attachment and we're just going to whip this until it's stiff so this will take around uh 10 minutes okay okay Nico, we're almost there yeah all right so that's what we're looking for it's stiff and uh we're ready we're ready to assemble so just transfer the meringue into a piping bag like this and fitted with a piping tip a round mm -hmm. uh, a large round piping tip okay. Okay. we need to snip off the tip of the piping bag mm -hmm. now we're ready to assemble Okay, Miko, so we're all ready. Here are yes. all the three components for our summer clemency trifle. Yeah. So we have the cashew crumble, which is cooled down, and mm -hmm. we have it here in a bowl. Yeah. We also have the calamansi curd, uh, which is cold already, and it's uh, thickened. And then the meringue that we just whipped. Yep, the salty meringue. Yeah. So I'll start by putting uh, probably a, a two, two tablespoons of the crumble onto a glass so we're using a wide mouth yeah the uh, wide mouth glass, glass because you want to assemble your trifle without any mess mm -hmm. yeah and you want everything to fit in quite yeah. easily i mean like i think we're the only ones who want that some people like the mess but yeah. as chefs we but want you know if you're clean. hungry you want a wide mouth so you just keep on yeah, that, digging that in that one too <laughs> i think that's the uh the right the reason why we have the wide mouth all right okay so next we're gonna put in our calamansi curd mm -hmm. okay just okay i like mine with lots of curd. lots of curd yeah. you want me to pour all <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm going to put uh, another layer of that crumble all right can i have extra crumble yes okay wow and then one more layer of that beautiful calamansi Curd. curd yeah before we put in our meringue okay. 
this is actually a fun activity to do with your kids, but just maybe make sure that all the components are ready. Yeah, and you then ask them to assemble yeah, it. And then have them pipe the meringue. And then you torch. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to go crazy and pipe lo a lot of um, meringue. meringue. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so now is the fun part and it's the most impressive part that we're going to use a blowtorch and just burn the top of the meringue and it, this will give you a smoky flavor that will toasted smoky yeah yeah smoky flavor toasted and it will just it's just a good flavor uh final flavor component mm -hmm. to our dish so we're just going to torch that just be careful gently. yeah Mm hmm Actually have our spoons yeah, ready. Yeah, you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A little more and then for the other one. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I'm slowly turning the glass uh, around so that we get an even and Toast. evenly toasted meringue. All right, uh, I think you have some Yeah, I wanted to put flowers. some edible flowers yeah. to put, you know, just to add color. So I'm going to snip off a few here and there. So we can put in, you know, some yellows. There you go. There. And the purple. Yeah. And that's our dish. That's our dish for, t uh, uh, that's our dessert. dessert. It's called Calamansi Summer Trifle. So it's perfect for your sunday afternoon with your family yeah. uh, an activity for your uh, kids and it's just a really wonderful like flavorful dish yes all, all together so. and it complements everything because you've got your nuts your yeah. salty meringue yeah. the sweetness of the curd so it's and really perfect the tartness of the calamansi yes yeah that's, that's it that's it for our drinks we're going to make the calamansi butterfly blue pea iced tea yes. okay so with the ingredients we have our superstar, mm -hmm. our calamansi extract, okay? And then that's 150 ml. Mm -hmm. And then we have around one tablespoon of our butterfly blue pea, dried blue pea. Yeah, you can also use other, other tea leaves that you have at home, but I just recommend this one because it, it you'll see later, it will yeah. create magic. There's a surprise yeah. behind it. Yes. Okay, yeah, and loose or bag tea is it's fine mm -hmm, right it's fine. okay and then we have 250 ml of water so yeah. this one is already um we've um simmered this one mm -hmm. okay and then we have 150 ml of soda water 50 grams of honey and 60 grams of corn syrup and of course Lots to of make, ice. Yeah, to make it refreshing, <laughs> yeah. you really need to have lots of ice. Yeah. But on the recipe, it says 300 yeah. grams. But the more, the merrier. All right, let's start. Okay, so first thing that we need to do is to put the, the tea leaves in a tea strainer, a teapot. It looks nice, yeah. so dainty. So it's so fragile too. So <laughs> just put pack it in there. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to slowly pour... The water? The hot water in. You might burn your fingers. That's fine. Yeah. Mm. So we're going to fill the pot. Okay, and I guess while you want me to put, while you're um, yeah, um, pouring, I'm just going to put I'll this put away. Here. While you're pouring there, I'm going to open up some calamansi. You know, you want it floating in your... Um, Alright. So we're just going to... Wow, look, it changed color straight yeah, away. Already. So we're going to steep this for around 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to leave that there and do some errands. Do some errands? <laughs> yeah. yeah let's and allow this to steep. Uh, we're going to put this aside and we're going to prepare the rest of the ingredients. Okay. okay. So, so what do while we we're waiting with that tea to steep, mm -hmm. What I'm doing is I'm adding more calamansi yeah. with our um, soda water. Yeah. I think we're lucky to have calama fresh calamansi yeah, here. No. Yeah, so might as well Max use that yeah, and everything. Use it. Okay. So we're using a five, uh, 750 ml uh, jar. So. so can you pass me more calamansi? More calamansi, yes. Yeah. 
Okay. So it's just for garnish and for presentation. So, so I squeeze, squeeze in a little and then, bit and then just yeah. chuck it inside. Okay? That will add some color and visual interest to your presentation. Yeah. And it looks professional and very refreshing. All right, I think that's about it, Miko. Okay. Okay, now we want to add some ice or yes. lots of ice. Lots of ice, please. So we're going to fill our jar halfway through. Or I'll be your catcher. For you, I think you want it filled all the way to the top. I'll probably put some on my glass. Okay. I think, yeah. It's, it's Especially because it's so hot right now. Yeah, it's summer. Now that we have our tea that it's been uh, steeping, steeping for, for 45, 45 minutes. minutes. So as you see, it changed color. So it's blue right now. We're going to pour this in a pot, mm -hmm. in a sauce pot. And then we're just going to add honey to it. Yep, I have my spoon. I'll be mixing Do it. I'll just put this away. Okay, okay go. Right. So we want it a little bit sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to add some corn syrup. And the, our superstar. Of course. We'll, we'll add uh, that in afterwards mm -hmm. when we create the magic. Yes. All right, so we just need to warm this up in the, uh, on top of the stove until the, uh, the corn syrup and the honey is dissolved. Uh, we don't need to boil it, just heat it up a little bit. This one, the, the honey and corn syrup has dissolved mm -hmm. and it's a little bit warm. Just remember to cool it down for, uh, for a few minutes so that we're, when we pour it onto our jar, it won't melt the, yes. the, the water, uh, the ice quick, too quickly. Okay. All right. Now we're ready to pour the, the tea mixture into our jar. Look at that beautiful blue color. Alright. Okay. Now, just put it there. Alright, so we're going to pour the iced tea mixture, the blue butterfly pea iced tea mixture, into our jar. And then look at that beautiful color. I think I need more ice. After you yeah. pour in the. And then stuff. we have um, the soda water. Soda water, yeah. Just a little bit to make it. Fizzle. Yeah. And so that's beautiful. And then come closer, camera. So we <laughs> so this is pure 100 percent Colorman C extract that we're going to pour. And I think this is just a stunning um, presentation for your guests yeah. to impress your guests and your family. And the flavors. And like the flavor you know, as well. Yeah. Citrusy. Yeah. And and really fresh. Wow. Look at the layers. And then see, it turns into purple. And for me, I just serve, I, I, I want to serve it this way and then allow people to just enjoy that visual, visual yeah. interest. Um, I think we can add some more garnish to this. Yeah. So we have some fresh, fresh um, basil, basil. Uh, springs and rosemary springs. Mm -hmm. So we'll just put that in there because that's cute. And okay. then... And some basil. A bunch. A bunch in and there. And that's it. And it looks fun. nice. But before that, we need to stir the... I'm using the, uh, the handle, the handle of a yeah. spoon, a wooden spoon. You can just serve it that way. That's cute too. Yeah, because eventually they're going to yeah. stick. So yeah. Just stir that because uh, we want all the goodness to be like mixed together. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, Okay, and then let, allow me to pour some on your yes, please. glass cup. Alright. It looks like a cocktail, doesn't it? Yeah, you can put this for, a, for a um, presentation. You know. Alright. On mine too. Okay. And I think we deserve a toast for this one. For our calamansi and blue, butterfly, butterfly blue, blue pea, pea iced tea. Iced tea. Yes. It's very, very good for summer. Okay. Those. Mm -hmm. <laughs>